Hey, welcome to this short guide on how to use our LoRa Studio. With this tool you can train your own custom image models on basically anything. You can train them on 3D models, on objects, on persons, on styles. And the use cases for this are basically endless. And it's so much fun to play around with, so I'm gonna get right into it and show you how it works. So we're gonna head over to 3DAIStudio.com and in the sidebar you can find the LoRa Studio. So you're gonna click on that and then you have a few sections here. We're gonna start with the Generate section. This is where you generate images. You're gonna have a few pre-selected LoRa's here. This is from our featured section. The library here isn't filled up much because I'm on a better version at the moment. Once this is released to the public in a few days, it will be filled up with a ton of pre-selected LoRa's you can use. Or of course you can train your own. Let's check out this Lego characters LoRa with an example image here. And now we're gonna go over to the generate section. The generate section is where you generate images. And now you can see the Lego characters LoRa is selected. You can also search for LoRa's or search for specific categories. Now, if a LoRa is selected, you can see it shows up here. Now, each LoRa has a trigger word. The trigger word is needed in the prompt to kind of show our image generator that you want to use this LoRa. So in my case, the trigger word is this thing right here and I can simply hit add here. But I can also just use this prompt here copy it right here let's say we want to generate four images and with the scale slider here we can kind of customize how much the image generation should stick to the generated model in this case the lego generated model and what the scale slider does simply put is it tells the image generation how much the generation itself should stick to the lora um, you're gonna see this in a second when i generate a few images so i'm gonna hit generate image here this is gonna take three to four seconds and as you can see the images have been generated can open up one of those images in a new tab. As you can see, those are pretty good. So now you could play around with the other selected LoRa's we have here, or you could start training your own model. This is what we are gonna do now. We're gonna train our first LoRa on a 3D model from the community library right here. I'm gonna hit download, and then you can head over to view 3D model. You can choose a GLB file. In my case, I'll upload that real quick. After uploading, you'll have your 3D model right here in the viewer. Um, so now it's important that you place the 3D model pointing towards you and pretty centered in the frame. Then you can confirm the view and then you can add a tag to the character. This is not for the generation or the training itself, this is just that you find the images better and more organized later on. So now we're gonna hit capture images. This is gonna capture the images and upload them here. As you can see, they all got tagged with this fantasy character and a name. Now we're gonna select them by clicking on fantasy character here. And now we're gonna train a LoRa on this model, on this 3D model. Um, so let's give this a name. This is not a name which is used for the generation or the, the training. This is just which shows up in your my LoRa section. So I'm gonna call it my fantasy character. Next up is a trigger word. Here it's important that you don't use any words common in the English language. So I'm usually just using some kind of words mixed with numbers, often just the first few letters of the words up here. Now going over to the steps, the steps control the quality of the generated model. So the higher steps the better, but of course keep in mind it's gonna take longer with higher steps. What I usually use as steps is around the 2000 mark, as that gives me personally the best results in my experience. Then you're gonna select the category, in my case, that's the character. And now we can hit train. Training usually takes about four to five minutes. It can take longer depending on the steps, of course. It's also gonna send you an email when it's done. So I'll skip to the part when it's done and I'll see you there. After around four minutes, our LoRa has been generated. You can find it under my LoRa's here and you can click on it to check out the details. You can change the title image, make it public, delete it or use it. We're gonna use it right now. And this is gonna take us to the generate section. It's pre-selecting our LoRa right here. It also shows us our trigger word. We can add that to the prop directly and we can set the scale right here. So let's generate an image with this. You can say an image, an image of in a fantasy forest, dark, stylized, surrounded by glowing insects. You can play around with the settings a bit here. The guidance scale is how much it should stick to the prompt you use and the scale right here is how much it should stick to the LoRa you use. So we're gonna click four images and we're gonna hit generate. And after about four seconds our images get generated, I'm gonna open up one in a new tab and these aren't bad. Now here with any image model, prompting is super important. I prepared a bit of a bigger prompt here 
and I'm gonna show you how a better prompt influences a better image. So I'm gonna hit generate again and let's see what that generates. So if you take a look at the generated images now, let's take a look at this one. These are pretty great out of the box as well. But as you can see, it lacks a bit of detail. So what we are gonna do now is increase the guidance scale a bit. We're gonna set it to 50 and then we're gonna hit generate again. And after a few seconds, those images have been generated as well. And we can take a look right here. As you can see, that quality is a bit better. So what we can do now is use that image and put it through our image upscaler. I used a similar prompt to what we used here in the LoRa. I'm gonna hit upscale here. And the image upscaler usually is super fast so as you can see that generated a new image and if we open it here you can see it really really added a lot of detail around the clothes around the nature or basically everywhere so you can use the LoRa as a base and then use the image upscaler to add details next i'm gonna train a LoRa on a random figurine i found on my desk i took a few images with my phone i'm gonna first start by entering a tag here i'm gonna call it Dex desk figurine i'm gonna upload images and the images get processed and then they will show up here. As you can see, those are just a few images I took with my phone. You could select desk figurine here. I'm gonna call it desk figurine. And as the trigger word, I'm gonna use desk figurine one one. I'm gonna use 2000 steps again. And I'm gonna select character as the category and I'm gonna hit train Laura. This is gonna take four to five minutes again gonna skip to the part when it's done and I'll see you there. And now the LoRa has been generated, we can head over to my LoRa's. As you can see, the new desk figurine LoRa is here. We can view details, we can now use this LoRa. And let's do that right away. Let's add the trigger to the problem. Let's say in a magical forest. We can just use that. Let's generate four images again. Click generate. And after a few seconds, the images are generated. You can take a look here. The quality is pretty good. You can even add more details by running it through our image upscaler. And um, you can even train styles. If you select a style here, you can tra train on, for example, a watercolor style, on a stylized 3D style, on basically any style you can imagine and use those. We are also rolling out support for texture eye LoRa's, which means you can use your trained LoRa's in your texture eye to generate textures. As a quick side note, you can also use image to image to upload your own image and then use the LoRa to generate a new image based on that image. That's a lot of images. So this was the guide on our LoRa Studio. I hope it was helpful and it kind of gave you a better understanding of how to use it and when to use it. I think it has a lot of use cases, especially for concept art, 3D generation, basically anything you can imagine and it's super fun to work with. You should definitely try it out and I uh, hope to see you guys soon.